Yes. Okay, so we were discussing about the disinfectant or disinfection. Uh, now, most of the disinfectants, they can be used uh, for different purposes. So their potency varies according to the disinfectant, according to the type of disinfectant. So here the, we, we are going to discuss the potency of some antimicrobial agents, which can be used as disinfectant. So first one is sterilants. Uh, these are the agents which are used to uh, remove or which are used to destroy the vegetative cell along with the uh, some of the endospores. They have also ability to kill the mycobacteria. Okay, so they can be used for sterilization of scapels, uh, respiratory therapy, therapy equipments, or the some of the proctoscopes, plastic petri dishes, endoscopes, etc. The example, common example, glutaraldehyde and hydrogen peroxide. Okay, but uh, FDA has given some strict guidelines regarding the use of glutaraldehyde. Uh, that when you are using the glutaraldehyde one must take care that this glutaraldehyde should not come in contact with the human being for longer period of time or the human can, should not get exposed to glutaraldehyde for longer time because of its ability to cause some carcinogenic effect. Okay, so uh, use of glutaraldehyde has been banned by the FDA or the use should be limited. Uh, then there is a second class of antimicrobial agent that is the high level disinfectant, which do not reliably destroy the endospores, but they have ability to kill uh, some mycobacteriums and the vegetative cells. The common examples are most of the halogens like uh, chlorine or iodines, phenol, chlorhexidine, heavy metals such as silver nitrate. You can see this chlorhexidine. You can find the chloride in mouthwash uh, in the market, uh, which can be used to clean the mouth. Okay, so this is the disinfectant uh, which kills the microorganisms in the mouth, chloride Okay, the phenols can be used to um, kill the microorganisms which are present on the surface. Uh, then um, iodine can be used to remove or to kill the microorganisms. Uh, or which can be used also used to clean the wounds. Okay, the silver nitrate can be used in most of the antiseptic creams. <clears throat> then intermediate level disinfectants, which has ability to kill the back mycobacterium, but they do not kill the viruses or endospores, even with prolonged exposure. For example, alcohols, ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so here one should take care that isopropyl alcohol has limited activity against mycobacterium, viruses, and endospore. Okay, low level disinfectant, which do not kill the mycobacterium, uh, but they can kill the vegetative cells. So a common example are common soaps and detergents. So already we have seen this, but again we'll go. We are going to see uh, one by one alcohols. They are intermediate level disinfectant. They work by denaturation of proteins. Wait a minute.
Okay. So this alcohol has the ability to denature the protein and disturb the cytoplasmic membrane. Uh, uh, it has both advantages and disadvantages that it evaporates rapidly. And um, the disadvantages is that uh, most of the times uh, the alcohols are flammable and they have ability to catch the fire. And this evaporation, rapid evaporation, uh, it might be one of the disadvantages that uh, because of low contact time and the efficiency of the alcohol decreases. Uh, now you might have seen the disinfectant or most of the sanitizers. They has that 70% isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so that 75% alcohol is because uh, if you increase the concentration of uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, the concentrated one or the pure isopropyl alcohol, they get evaporate rapidly. So it get less contact time with the skin or with the surface. Uh, so it is not, uh, it will not kill the microorganism because of less contact time. And if we decrease the concentration below 70%, the drying time will decrease. Apart from that, the efficiency of this alcohol will also decrease as you go on decreasing the concentration. So 70% alcohol, isopropyl mm -hmm. alcohol is recommended for sanitizer or most of the disinfectant. Then comes halogens. Okay, so most of the halogens, uh, they are intermediate level antimicrobial agents. Uh, you might have seen that uh, um, and swimming pools also you have that chlorinated water okay so that that is because of its ability to kill the microorganism it will not allow the microorganism to grow, grow uh, in the uh, in the swimming pool water apart from that the iodines are mostly present in antiseptic creams cypladine can be turned into me um, um, antimicrobial creams but less than powder you can uh, apply the powder, cypladine or betadine powder, iodine, povidone iodine powder on the wound. In first year B form, you might have prepared that iodine powder, povidone iodine powder. Okay. Then uh, there is a. Um, okay, be bleach, then chloramines uh, in the wound dressing can be used. Bromine uh, and disinfection of hot tubes can be performed. Uh, so these are the halogens which can be used. Okay, so so this is about halogens. Uh, then comes the oxidizing agent. Already discussed in last lecture, most of the uh, peroxides, hydrogen peroxide, you might have heard. 
and uh, these uh, agents or this liquid is used for the cleaning of wound okay and then ozones are the parasitic acids and uh, they kill the microorganisms by oxidation of their microbial enzymes and they are high level disinfectants and antiseptics hydrogen peroxides uh, it is strong oxidizing agent and it can disinfect and sterilize the surface of object it catalyzes it, cat it catalyzes the neutralizes uh, non useful for treating open wounds uh, ozone treatment of drinking water you might have heard about this uh, treatment of drinking water with the ozone uh, it has some disinfecting action the parasitic acid then surface active agents we commonly use at home uh, the soaps okay they reduce the interfacial tension or surface tension of solvent to make them more effective at dissolving solute uh, soap and detergent have hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails okay so both are a good determining agent for antimicrobial uh, then uh, most most of the quaternary ammonium compounds Uh, they are colorless tasteless and harmless to humans and can be used as antimicrobial agent okay apart from that this surface active agent amongst this uh, if you study the surface active agents the anionic and non ionic surfactants are mostly used cationic surfactants are strong antimicrobial agent but because of its irritate irritation property it has that ability to cause skin irritations so they are less recommended to use in the um, pharmaceutical preparations but quaternary ammonium compound is the exception from that they can be used uh, in most of the pharmaceutical preparations some heavy metals can be used ions are antimicrobial because they alter the 3d shape of proteins okay there are low level bacteriostatic and fungicidic agent you must be knowing what is bacteriostatic what is bactericidal what is fungis fung fungicidic what is fungicidal okay so bactericidal are the side when it comes to sidal when we say sidal means it totally kill the microorganism when we say bactericidal means it completely kill the bacteria okay and it will not allow the further growth of bacteria when we say static bacteriostatic or fungistatic it means it prevent the further growth of microorganism but it will not kill the existing one okay so this is the basic difference so 1% silver nitrate can be used to prevent blindness caused by gonorrhea then thimerosal used to preserve the vaccines the copper controls uh, the algae growth in the reservoir fish tank uh, swimming pools etc etc then these are the aldehydes okay so there is always question on in university examination on these uh, disinfecting agents okay so compound containing terminal cho groups i uh, mean aldehyde groups are the uh, most of the disinfecting agents for example glutaraldehyde already discussed uh, they can be cross linked with amino hydroxyl or sulfyl drill groups and some carboxyl group to denaturate the proteins and inactivate the nucleic acids so already discussed the glutaraldehyde both disinfectant and sterilizants and they work in the short exposure times and long long exposure time depending on the uh, how you are going to use the glutaraldehyde if you are going to use it as a disinfectant you can the short exposure is enough as a sterilizer you can you uh, expose it for a prolonged period of time formalin is also one of the aldehyde uh, can be used uh, for the disinfection purpose uh, it can be used for the disinfection of rooms and instruments then most of the gaseous agents can be used like ethylene oxide propylene oxide beta propyl electrons 
they can be used uh, in the closed chambers to sterilize them okay uh, for example if you want to sterilize uh, say a septic area or class 100 area at that time you can use some gaseous agent like ethylene oxides it denatures the protein by dna and cross-linking functional groups uh, used in the hospitals and dental offices can be hazardous to people and often the highly explosive and extremely poisonous so while while using these agents we should take care of this okay and most of the antimicrobial agents like antibiotics semi synthetic and synthetic chemicals can be used uh, typically used for the dis used for the treatment of different diseases and some are used for antimicrobial control outside the body okay so this is about the disinfectant okay the example of disinfectant from next lecture we'll see different test used to evaluate disinfect you, means there are different tests which are used to identify or which are used to determine the efficiency of disinfectant so that we are going to study from next lecture okay